Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about fixing the issue of having our public IP address being blacklisted. In this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how IP blacklisting occurs, how to troubleshoot IP blacklisting, and how to get removed from an IP blacklist. Anytime we change internet providers, we're going to be given a new set of IP addresses. Now, depending on how many we want, it can be a block of four, it can be a block of six, it can be a block of eight, or even more. But you're going to have to have enough outside or public IP addresses to cover the public interface of the devices facing the Internet. Now you would think that the Internet provider would go about checking those IP addresses to make sure that they've not been blacklisted, but that's not the case. You're going to get that block of IP addresses and it's going to be up to you before you configure them for an outside interface on any device to go to the Internet and check to make sure that none of them are blacklisted. So the ISP has a router. That router is going to port forward everything that's coming into your network over to the outside IP address of your firewall. Now that IP address is the one that is going to be identified on the MX record for your mail server. If that IP address is blacklisted, then you're going to have a problem with SMTP traffic coming off of your network. And that's why it's so important to check each one of those IP addresses in that block to make sure that they have not been blacklisted. Now the other thing that can happen is that your organization, that is to say somebody in your organization, has been sending out a lot of emails. Now they may be sending these out to clients and they may be sending them out to other organizations, but somebody's gotten tired of receiving those emails from your organization and has identified that email address as being spam. Now if someone has a spam filtering service, then that service is going to have a subscription to a blacklisting service. Therefore, when your IP address gets identified as spam, the spam filtering service is going to identify and place you on that blacklist that they subscribe to. And there are hundreds of them. Now the other way that you're going to get blacklisted is malware. Malware can install on someone's machine on your network a small SMTP server. This SMTP server is being used as a relay to send spam out your public IP address interface. And therefore, you're being identified as the spammer. It is difficult to identify that machine right away that is doing the spamming, but you can nail it down, but it takes time. In the meantime, there are things you can do to prevent SMTP traffic from coming off of your network except from the IP address of your exchange server. So you're having issues with your email being kicked back or undeliverable or for whatever reason you've been identified as a spammer. First thing you want to do is find out what is the IP address for your outside interface. To do that you're going to go to www.whatismyip.com and so this is going to be the IP address the IP version 4 IP address that you're going to use to check to see if you've been blacklisted and we're going to see how we do that next now there are a lot of different ways that you can check your outside IP address to see if it's been blacklisted my go-to tool on the internet is MX toolbox you may have another choice. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to take the IP address of a well-known spammer and we're going to check it to see if it's been blacklisted. Now this could be the IP address of your outside interface that you learned when you went to whatismyipaddress.com. All right, now we have that IP address and we're just going to go ahead and check it against the over 100 blacklist that they currently have available. Let's see what happens. 
and it says we notice you are on a blacklist and you go down here through the list and you see all of them here and this is how you're going to realize that hey whoever subscribed to whatever spam service had a blacklisting subscription and that's how I got on the list we will return to that same site MX toolbox in just a moment to see how we get removed from the blacklist but in the meantime we got to take a look at how we're going to try to prevent any more spam from coming off the inside of our network now if this is the case and I don't really know if it is or not because what I do when I get a hold of a Cisco router the first thing I do is I have a default number of access list that I put on to that router to prevent something like a small SMTP server from getting me blacklisted. And so we're going to take a look real quick at how we go about creating an access list that's going to only allow SMTP traffic from our exchange server and block all other SMTP traffic trying to leave our network. This access list is designed for a Cisco device, in this case my Cisco firewall. I'm just going to add it to the config. So you can see what I've done here is I've just allowed one host, and that is the inside IP address of my exchange server, to send out SMTP traffic. Everybody else is going to be blocked from sending any SMTP traffic from the inside of my network and that's how that works so I'm then going to attach this access list to the inside interface or my default gateway that is coming off of my Ethernet network and this is the IP address that people use to get out to the internet I'm then going to attach this access list to that interface using that last command and that's all it takes so now if there's any SMTP traffic being generated by malware anywhere on this particular part of my internal network it's going to be blocked now if you have subnets and you have multiple default gateways you would have to have this access list attached to each one of those interfaces that point to the default gateway so our IP address has been identified as being blacklisted. So what do we want to do next? Well, we have to contact the provider of this blacklist and we need to get removed. Now to do this, we're going to have to go over here to details. And from here, we're going to have to read the instructions and we're going to have to go to the website for this particular blacklisting service. This is called spamrats.com. Let's go ahead and visit the site so we can get some instructions on how we can be removed. And you'll have to do this for each and every blacklisting service that has been identified as blacklisting your IP address. So they got a number of requirements. I won't go through them as they're all different. Now some of these blacklisting services are easy to get off of. And as long as you stay off of them, then you won't have any more problem with them. And some of them can be very difficult. Some of them are nothing more than some aggravated individual living in a log cabin out in Montana who's got nothing better to do than to list your IP address as being a spammer, and he may never take you off of it. That has happened before. So be aware that each one of these blacklisting services has different requirements to get off of that list. So when someone contacts you about their emails not being delivered, you have to request that those non-deliverable messages be sent to you so that you can look at the metadata and figure out exactly what's causing those emails to be dropped. Now, if it's a spam issue, then you're going to see it in the metadata of that non-deliverable email. Now, you have to identify that individual, what department they work in, and if they're in sales or they have anything to do with client relationship databases, you can probably come to the assumption that that individual has gotten your IP address blacklisted. Now, once you do 
beg or ask or request that your IP address be removed from the blacklist, it can take a little while for that to happen. Now the other option you have is to take an IP address from your block of IP addresses that has not been blacklisted and go update your MX record. Now that's going to take a little while to update. That can be 48, 72 hours and sometimes even longer. But that is another solution. But your first solution should be to identify how you got on that list and try to prevent it from happening again. And so in this short video presentation, you got to see how we can get blacklisted and how we can get ourselves removed from a blacklist. You got any questions, you got concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor and I'll see you in my next video.